Now go out there and kick my ass. I'll do my best. <laughs> I will hit the bar after. Yep. Give it a go. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Crabby D and D. Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't usually show my Steam overlay while it's recording. Hmm. Spooky. Well, now you know who's talking, so that's not too bad. So, hello everyone. Welcome to Crabby D and D. I am here with Cat. Yo. D Mortar. Hello. Curve. Hiya. Vinny. Hello. And Romulus. Hello. And, of course, me, your DM. So. Hey, hey. Shall we get right into this? Oh, God. Oh. I've been stressed for this all week. Stressed and excited. Oh, dude, yeah, 100%. I hope Curve doesn't spend the whole time sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it would be such a curved thing to do, though. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. Did that fix it? Oh, Discord. Discord's giving me some trouble now. That's not good. Discord giving you some back chat. It is. Ugh. It's I giving you some back chat. All right. Man, the tech issues today. I know. Honestly, they're all coming out of the woodwork. Something in the air. It must be. Okay. Don't know why it's doing that. For now, it's I've... appropriate that we're experiencing technical issues at the same time that Mortar is. Yeah, ah. yeah. that's fair. Okay. I just need to turn Mortar on and off again. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'll unplug oh, I mean, oh, I mean, Store him to factory settings. I mean, turning Mortar on, I, I don't know what you're going to use for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> well, sure as hell isn't going to be cat. I can promise you that one. Holy shit! Okay. <laughs> okay. Battery's not included. Moving on. Right. Yes, please. Indeed. I think we best get started with this. Welcome back, all. And can you believe what happened last time? Well, I can. And maybe there will be a few secrets revealed in this one. For now, a reminder. Secrets. Last session, our party of adventurers, Cat, Curve, Mortar, Romulus, and Vinny, had begun to enjoy what sweet little there was at Inglassen during the autumnal festival, moving from shop to shop, taking in the food, the atmosphere, and the joy of the locals. And the With... grenades. And the grenades. Oh, yeah. and the grenades. With some money spent and the day done, the party began to retire for the night. Cat, however, wanted to chat with Mortar about the future and his state of mind. Enough of that seemed to break through to him in some rather drastic ways. As Cat was asked to leave, Mortar collapsed, overwhelmed with a panic attack before the calm motions wore off, and he was unable to answer the door as Curve simply knocked on it to check up on him. Later that night, Cat snuck into Mortar's room in hopes of investigating his weapon, Black Scorpion, only to find that he wasn't present and she was attacked by his shadow spawn. With the combat ending swiftly, Kat now stands at the edge of the landing, Nexor beside her as we return to the story at hand. Kat, your breathing is heavy from the combat. The last flex of the black page burning away as Nexor rushes up to you. His footfalls loud in the echoing hall, but you know the magic is not disturbing causing this, or the magic is preventing the sound from disturbing the rest of the party. Cut. You're right, pet. Mm. I've uh, look around the room. No traces of him in here, right? Not you are uh, out in the landing. You were out the landing when you were it. attacked. His room was, uh, you closed the door behind you when you left his room. Sure. Uh... 
Mortar's gone. I don't know where he is. Possibly trouble. That thing was his. I can't guarantee that it's him who's in charge. Um, I am not sticking around to chat. I am going straight to Romulus and... I'm heck, I'm going to try and drag him out of bed. But... Okay. Yeah. Good you head, fucking luck. You head to Romulus's <laughs> room, <laughs> opening his door. Um... Romulus, you've stayed up a little later, as you were whittling, as you said. You're kind of sat there at your desk, not having heard a peep as Cat bursts through the door. There's a sense of, oh, Cat's here to talk. And then there's a sense of realisation. Oh, oh. Something's right, happened. Well, <laughs> I'm lucky. just going to, like, sigh. What happened? Mortar. Okay. I don't know where he's gone. Right, um, who was the last person to see Mortar? Uh, well, me. Okay. Probably. <sighs> Show me the room. Um, I'm just going to lift myself up and slightly tiredly amble over to Mortar's room. Okay. Uh, and try and uh, use my knowledge of tracking uh to find find a clue can i go wake the others that's a good idea uh okay. Vinny... i'm going to wake the others okay you go around you wake up the rest of the party members going to i'll probably say probably Vinny's room first followed by curve And go ahead and roll me a survival check, please, Romulus. Um, I'm oh going boy. to say... DC for this is going to be very high. Uh, okay, yeah, that ain't going to do it. You look around the room. There are no footfalls. This is wood that is immaculately kept clean by unseen servants. There is no trace of clothing or anything left behind as if he has taken off it seems you don't s you see there are some things that he has just left behind trinkets and the occasional um kind of bit of clothing but everything that he usually carries is on him you don't see him you don't see any form of tracks or tracing as to where he could have gone but you're inside of a magical mansion. There's only one way he really can go. Alright, um... To, to clarify... I'm going, I'm going to go find... I can't remember that little name, the little ferret friend. Uh, oh, Arbria? yeah. Ar Ar mm. Ambria? People were having a go at me at not remembering her name last session. Hey, look, it's been a week since then. I can't help yeah, you, I'm afraid. But, but ha Harlan's a fan favourite, though, so, you know, we can uh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm So, who, um, who are you going to go and find? Please don't kill me. <sighs> the ferret friend whose name I can't currently remember. I want to say uh, um, Ambria? Ambria? Okay. Where, where, like are you, where are you close? going to seek out this ferret? I'm going to knock on the staff-only door. Okay. You knock on the staff-only door. Roll me a strength check. Oh, fuck. Um, I don't have advantage on this currently. That's a natural 20. Natural 20. Wow. Despite yeah. there being... E the despite mm -hmm. the... No. Despite there being extra dimensional difference between your current area and the staff only room, you knock on the door and yet the sound is still heard. Somehow your sheer muscles and physique have overcome extra dimensional barriers just this once. <laughs> Uh, I I also rolled a twenty five total on my perception for the ferret, so <laughs> I rolled very well. Um, they can't hear it. Yeah, uh, natural nineteen on me and a natural twenty for you. So 
Yeah. You otherwise knock on the door. A moment later, the small swing door at the bottom otherwise opens, and the uh, ferret, as you put it, walks out. Looks up at you. Uh, squeaks gent lightly. Uh, is there any chance I could have been uh, casting my speak with animals ritual as I was? This is to all happening it? kind of back to back. Cat's still okay. getting the, your other two party members right. and probably woken uh, up. At I this will. Point. I will bow down low. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot speak your tongue currently. Uh, however, one of ours, Mortar, has gone missing. We believe it to have been, if willing, then not in his right mind at the time of doing so. Is there any way you can help us locate him? The if ferret, he is within his manner. The ferret thinks for a moment before kind of... And or... in the meantime, I'm doing my little ritually shit to try yeah. and understand. <laughs> yeah. I'll say Curve and Vinny, you have both been informed by Cat that Mortar is missing. Um, as you have been woken. Um, mm -hmm. Nexor is currently, he's returned to the dining table, almost like he's thinking about what to do during this time. You otherwise go downstairs okay. and the ferret heads back into the staff only room while you, while you proceed to ritual cast this spell. If Mortar had simply walked out, would he have had to have gone through the dining room? Yeah. Okay. You are also aware that he is very quiet, and so it's quite possible that he may have snuck past Nexor if need be. So for reference, this uh, the Magnificent Mansion, this chamber is basically one big grand hall. It is a ballroom, it's a dining room, it's everything that you might want in this room. And then there is a staircase that leads up to all of your bedroom doors that are kind of just lined. I mean, do you want me to hop down there so I can actually talk to Ferret Lady? She's gone into the staff room. Right? No. Okay, in. Yeah, go right. on, Vinny. Well, Mortar can be stealthy when he wants to be, but if he just walked out, he probably drew some attention to himself. Unless he didn't want to be at all attention drawn to him maybe he could have also teleported he can do that but only short distances cat didn't you see mortar last night yeah yeah i did and he was emotional but contemplating his gun and the gun's not in his room. So wherever he's gone, he's got his gun. Getting a lot of static from you, Vinny. Uh, still? Or... Yeah. Okay. one time when it was perfect yeah yeah us. that was that was it now it's back for vengeance there you go yeah <clears throat> okay the calm before the storm yep okay is that any better yeah it sounds better at the moment yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay so You've mentioned that cat that Mortar must have left with his weapon. What did you talk about? Difficulties to help. I wanted to be there to help him if he needed help. Ah. Oh. That was very kind of you, Kat. Um, 
We should at least try and find him. Is there any anything in his room? Uh, um, I just didn't find him, anything. I didn't anything. And I think. Can we see any signs of what he might have been doing before he left? Giving his room a look over. I'll say, go ahead and make an investigation check. Okay. Again, DC is going to be quite high on this. Mm hmm. That's fine. Uh, 13. 13. Looking around the room, you can see signs where he may have pulled the cover off of the bed and was otherwise sat on it for a little bit. Um, can't you recall that he kind of did pull the cover off of the, or the duvet off of the bed to kind of sit on while you were talking? But outside of that, nothing. It looks the, um, almost as if... Were the, hmm? were the bottles still in there? Yes, the bottles are still there. So you can see that there has been, like he has been drinking... But I'll say that Cat, you can recall he was doing that before you got there. Well, he was drinking these before I got here. Is the pile of clothing that he had the gun buried under still on the bed? No. The pile of clothing seems to have been moved or removed. You can't see it anywhere in the room. Right. At this point, I think it's fair to say he's probably in trouble. Agreed. And I'm guessing he's probably not just lurking around the mansion. Mm -mm. The ferret comes back Absolutely. as Romulus. Your, I'll say for the sake of brevity, your speak with animals is up at this point, as is yours, Curve, as it always is. Mm -hmm. Can you understand me now? I can, yes. Good. Uh, no, he's not in the manor. And um, nobody saw him go, which means that either he didn't want to be seen or nobody was around in the hall when he left. But I'd say ask Nick, or he'd probably have more of an idea, if anything. He's the usual one we leave to guard the area. Thank you. Much appreciated. It's all right. Right. Uh, I'm going to now rush off to Nexor. Okay. Mm, Nexor's, join. Nexor's kind of sat there, his elbows on the table, kind of almost thinking his hands clasped in front of his mouth as he's just kind of almost muttering some to himself furrowed brow very much thinking he's not in the manor anymore i didn't see him go he's he can be stealthy at times apparently it's not <sighs> like me don't feel too bad about it. His skill set includes teleportation, so mm. there's a really solid chance that was involved. Right. Kind of difficult to see teleportation. No, that's fair. With everything that's going on... <sighs> Sorry. It's... I'm not going to be able to get Kamir to help in this. She's still here, that's but fine. she needs to rest for tomorrow. That is fine. So, so if, your, I... if your friend's just missing, do you have a way to locate him? Or an understanding of where he'd go? I mean, you've only been to the city a day or two. That's what I'm... <sighs> Are there any places of significance he'd want to go? Um, okay, so Harlan, the person, doesn't think so. <laughs> Can Romulus make a, a check to see if there's anything that's been said in passing that I've not picked up? I'll say like you haven't really interacted with him. I'll say go ahead and okay, make me I a... Interacted. It's not more of the, a... Not, you've... For the past. not for the past <laughs> most, two most days. Been... Yeah, Mortar's yeah, been true. keeping to himself pretty deliberately, so he hasn't yeah. really... I think the only people he's really spoken to are... In the... Yeah, not in the past like, two curve days. And Curve, like, kind yeah. of in passing. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'll say if you want to, go ahead and make me an insight check. It will be a disadvantage, so I believe that's a straight roll for you. 
Um, yep. Alternatively, you can make this history with disadvantage. I'm I'm gonna go for insight because I feel like insight is gonna give me more than okay. history would at this point. Scout out uh, the brain. That is a solid eighteen. Okay, Mortar, please go ahead and roll me a deception check. Uh, okie dokie. This will be the DC. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, 15. 15. Romulus, you're thinking of areas of significance. There aren't many. You know that... Obviously, you arrived at Glasson with an extra companion who he does he hasn't necessarily seen where Carburn was taken, but had an uncanny ability to tell where she was. You know that he had ordered a prosthetic, and yesterday you saw that he came back with Cat. So there are three possible leads, but you're not sure. He's traveling without a leg at the moment. If he is trying to make a run for it, or trying to get somewhere, most likely he'll try and get the prosthetic first. After that, it might be worth checking on Carver and see if perhaps he's gone to visit. I, I, I don't know. I have no uh, way to get to your friend in the tower, but if you want, and if somebody wants to come with, we can make a run straight to the prosthetics just to see if he's there. Let's go. Let's go. Cat! What? We're going to head to the prosthetics. See if maybe he's gone to collect the leg. Okay. Alright. Um... You and Vinny I... coming with, or...? I... Yeah, 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 no, I... Probably the best I need... lead we can, yeah. Yeah, I need to I don't help think any... him. Is anybody aware that Cat's wounded, like, pretty badly? Yeah, I'm, I'm bloody. Like, I'm, like, half hell. She's not doing great. I was just like... <laughs> Here's, Nobody knows. <laughs> here's the thing. Oh shit. Nexor's the only one who seems to know Cat is injured because Cat hasn't stated otherwise. She is bloodied, yes. But the damage that she visibly. suffered was not necessarily visible. Oh shit. So currently, oh, shit. unless Cat divulges it with the party, none of you know that Cat is bloodied. Uh, Cat probably wouldn't say out of fear that the party be angry with Mortar and he's already in a bad way. Okay. Ooh, spicy, spicy. And Nexor, yeah, honestly. I'll say in this instance, um, Nexor kind of puts it past him as they're all adventurers. They probably know that she's fine and then carries on. Fuck that. Okay. Yeah, um, honestly. So, well, I cannot action i cannot action on that information so uh right uh vinny uh you're good to go as well uh do you have any ways to track people or things nothing special i'm afraid i've been picking up a couple of tricks from you but well keep your eyes peeled let's go and we head for the prosthetics i'm also on the way going to be trying to keep an eye out for any more task specific tracks mm -hmm. at this point in time obviously I'd, I'd be like one leg like <laughs> yeah, footprints one that have foot. one leg on them okay um, i will then ask if you're going to do that who's going to be leading the survival check to make it to the prosthetics efficiently wasn't nexor said he was going nexor's to be coming nexor, with us nexor can his survival is pretty good so you can rely on him if you want that <laughs> He also knows the area mm -hmm. better than any of I will very quickly mm -hmm. insight yeah. Nexor, but if that's all right. But I, yeah. I, it would make logical sense for Nexor to be the one to. Does to be the other. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, does anybody have higher than a? Oh, that was supposed to be two of them. Uh, does anybody have higher than a plus seven to their survival? <laughs> Who's with the party? Nope. Man? Okay. So Nexor will lead the way around the, in the city then. Okay. And you're in... sure? You're sure you're okay leaving the place unguarded? Uh, 
No. He, he stops and almost seems to be hesitant mm. at the door with that. <sighs> no, Finney's right. We can't ask someone to abandon their duty. Right. Yes, we can. Curve. They've helped us. We're not going to besmirch that by asking more of them. <laughs> Nexor, stay here. Keep an eye out. If he comes back, let us know. Will do. Does somebody have a fucking sending stone? <laughs> no. No. In, in the time that we've been faffing about and stuff, can I change my attunement? Yeah, sure. Cool, thanks. Okay. And don't forget what we discussed regarding the book, because we realised that we were doing it wrong. Yes, yes. Yeah, so... I, uh, now I don't need to worry too much about tuning into the sending book, because I can still send sending, I just can't do it for free. Yeah. And I'm back. That's cool. That's not a problem. Oh, Mortar's back. We're all good. Mortar's back. back. Hey, guys! <laughs> hey, guys, what yeah, up? I just went out to get some cigarettes. <laughs> um, so... Oh, dude! <laughs> you think my one-legged ass is going to get fast? <laughs> <laughs> went, went to the uh to the 24 7 and went and got some cigarettes um okay. um to the gas station all right so i would like someone to make me a survival check then please and i will say romulus you're making your separate one so curve vinnie or cat i'd only be a plus two mine's a three Okay, in that case, I will uh, I will cast Enhance Ability on Cat. Okay. Cat. Using um, uh, Owl's Wisdom. Okay. So, so advantage on, advantage wisdom, on, wisdom, on checks. wisdom checks. Okay. So survival check for Romulus would to you... check for checking for tracks. And... Would you like me to roll oh, no, against or no? Oh, no. No, this is fine. Okay. We'll get we'll get to you rolling something in a minute. Oh, don't worry, bro. You're all good. Oh, that the man fucking hilarious. A one and a three. Oh, that's a six. Can I? Uh, hang on, give me one second. Give me okay. One. You used well, your no, tides of chaos, chaos last yeah, time. Do you want to set yeah. off random wild magic here? No, I don't want to set off random wild magic. That's gonna end disastrously. Disastrously. If... Exemplary. So you um, don't. Oh, so you don't want Tides of Chaos back? Mortar. <laughs> I mean, can I do a Wisdom check as well? I mean, you know a survival. What? You know what, what? Yeah, I'm gonna overexert myself, and Cat basically tries to dig deep. Um, okay. Let, let, then, I guess. All right. Okay, but Make Curve me... would want to look for clues as well. Make Just... me a D hundred. Yeah, you can. You can. This yeah. is more of a trying to remember the way to the shop. <laughs> a natural one and a natural two on Tides of Chaos. I was getting these two dice. I don't like them ones. They can go do one. Because I'm a go. con, they're like, oh no, you're having too much fun, my friend. Okay, that is a 44. Are you at half spell uh, spell points? Me? Uh -huh. No. No. No? Okay, so this is only a plus two because you're in an area of high density. Okay, for the next minute you can teleport as a bonus action 20 feet. Each time. Well, that's actually incredibly useful. Let's it, go! It's useful <laughs> if you want if you want to go short distances, but in this instance you're trying to figure out where you're going. As you I teleport to the door. As in this instance, as you're otherwise running forward. You're thinking about it, and the rest of you are watching as there's almost this stress or wave of something comes over Cat, and there's almost this moment where she flickers, like shifting in and out. Think of it like, you know, in Wreck It Ralph when Vanellope yeah, 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 yeah. flickers, yeah, the, the glitching. Yeah. Yeah, she begins yeah. to do that. Ooh, it doesn't seem comfortable, cool. though, it seems painful. But, Cat, whatever you're doing, I need you to stop it right now because we don't need someone else to worry about. Just to see her wince a little bit. I don't really know. We need to help Mortar. So that is unfortunately a six. You otherwise are running in a direction at night. You do not recognize this place. You're in a city of 
an origin that you do not know. You try to use some magic oh, to you try and about push me? your edge. Oh no, just the whole party. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, because I have a six on me, and I thought, wait, no, he didn't think. Oh I no, that was that me. was a six uh, purpose uh, total for what Cap sorry. got. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> As you're otherwise running, you can't seem to find your way, and it is lit at night here, like. There are no clouds, so the moons are always out, otherwise providing bright light for the entire city. You are going around the city, though, but you're lost. I would like someone to try again with a survival check. The DC has increased. Ooh. May I? And if you would like to. And uh, Romulus, obviously, what did you get on your survival? I got a 13 to look for any signs of mortar. Okay. Looking around, no distinguishable signs. Either he didn't come through this way, or perhaps because you're lost, you're not making it in the correct direction, so you wouldn't see them anyway. There's a lot of unknowns here. What did you get, Curve? Uh, what was the wisdom boost thing earlier that Vinny did? It was just a cat, and it gave her advantage. Just cat? Then it's just a seven, I'm afraid. You point the party in a direction in kind of this panic state as you say what you said to Kat and she kind of almost recoils back slightly, a little bit more withdrawn. And with that, you take the lead knowing that there's not much time, but you don't know where you're going. And as you rush through from one street to the next, you don't know where you are. At this point, the party is thoroughly lost. Unless someone wishes, unless someone is able to roll a DC 20 survival check. You're lost within the city. I'm I'm going to, realising we're lost, I'm going to focus on getting us wet to the prosthetics because that's the only real potential lead I can think of. Okay, go for it. Can I summon Crolodex and Terrador? I'm going to send Crolodex to try and help look. It should be noted it's a good idea of you uh, make use of... Uh, that uh, enhance ability because that's not a one-time thing. Oh, you should not? be making. No, you have that for now. Making, oh, it's for now. Yeah, making I checks. Was, I thought it was also, one-off thing. Do you, do you have any? Help does Vinny have any bars? Nineteen. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I do. If yeah. anyone wants to um, do a crit, something. there you go. I got that twenty. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll do. I'll that will do. So, with that, I will say cat. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me two dice. Okay, which dice? I've got a, quite a couple of dice. Uh, two d20s. My apologies. I mean, if you want to roll d4s, that's fine. This is for wild magic, so... Oh, jeez. Price. Okay. okay. Nine what, and ten, I think? What level is Trelodex? Spell Trelodex level. Trelodex is... Yeah, Trelodex is fifth. Fifth? And, um... Terrador just happens. Terrador just happens. Okay. What... Uh, are you below half? Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment? Okay. So, no either of your wild magics go off. Are you going to be casting anything like Titan Armor? I do plan to, yes. After what I've experienced. And Kat, if she gets the opportunity to talk to Romulus, is going to let him know that... She was attacked trying to see him, but she doesn't want to let everyone else know and tell Romulus that this is just though if it happens. Bed. Uh, I assume this is said uh, like maybe when we're stopped at, uh, at, at a crossroads or something, and uh, like yeah. Romulus is just going to take a deep breath, look to the ground. Are there stones on the ground here? Uh, paving stones, yeah. gonna make a very quick little roll mm. okay okay uh, Romulus does not attempt to uh, like break one of the paving stones as a way to vent anger um, yeah. Yeah. right don't, don't do it. I kind of poke them. we'll find out what happened here but if he was in his right mind and set something to harm you, I'm not going to be that forgiving. Fair? B 
see the look of complete anguish on Cat. Just like, I still don't feel comfortable with this. There is stress. <laughs> so much stress. Okay. Maybe she shouldn't have told Romulus. Who knows? Okay. Mm. Mortar, please roll me a d20. You know what this is for. By the way, lower is better. Yeah, I uh, got a 12. Okay. So, as the party, you arrive at the prosthetics. Cat, you recall the information having gone there the previous day and ended up picking him up from the Artificers area. You head there, and immediately you see the place where it was that Mortar got his prosthetic. You s and Romulus, you recognise it upon getting close to it. You see that the door is open. I will go first in. <laughs> okay. Fair. Okay, if this is the place, I'll be right behind you. Looks like it. Okay. This isn't the right one. Where is it? This will do for now, hopefully. That might be a bit quiet. Switched to this, I know this is a reliable one. Okay. You head inside. Stepping in through the threshold, Romulus, un uh, under hoof, you otherwise hear a crack. And you look down and you see that, the gla that there is broken glass on the floor here. You look up and see that the door, although it, where it is open, a section of it has broken. Where someone may have punched to break in. <clears throat> You take a you take an immediate moment to listen in to your surroundings, kind of taking in everything, and you hear the faint sound of crying from the back of the room. Romulus is going to be on guard, but stepping in. Hand on weapon, but not immediately going in guns blazing. Okay. You head in. Taking a few steps in, all of you are cautious of what has happened here. Almost on high alert, as you step forward, you hear the sound of the whimpering stop. Hello? Roll me a persuasion Who's check with disadvantage. Oh, nice. That is the one time I've ever done well on a put on anything charisma related. That's oh, that's a sixteen because I am I have negative riz. Yeah. Wow. As you otherwise speak out in this moment, kind of stepping in, you hear the whimpering continue as you otherwise hear in a very kind of small voice I'm here is I, that a voice I recognize it is it's of the tinkerer as you look behind the countertop you can see curled up underneath the countertop otherwise clutching both of his arms and shaking you see he is bleeding. Oh, goodness. Um, you can see that where you would behold someone with a wound, you'd be able to immediately, with your medicinal knowledge, know where the wound is coming from, where this or where the blood is coming from and where the wound is. But with him, you don't. You look at him and you just see blood streaming from his nose, but no physical bruising as if broken. A mental attack, if you will. 
and you see that he is shaking and holding himself in the smallest possible posture. You also note where you look up, you can see that there is a overturned box on the ground near to him. You can see that it is labelled Mortar, and it is empty. I am so sorry. You're all right now. He took the leg. Do you know where he went? He slowly shakes his head. Did you see which door he left out of? Shakes his head. Just continuing to whimper. I am so terribly sorry. Is there anything we can do for you? Is there anywhere we can take you? He looks up at you in this moment. Roll me an insight check. It's a good thing I'm good at these. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing you're good at these. Yeah. Natural 20. Natural 20. I will, oh, I will say that you will not be needing to roll the wisdom save after realizing this because of the natural 20. You insight him as he looks up at you and you say, is there anything we can do for you? You see in his eyes the look of someone who genuinely wants you to kill him. Oh. Oof. And in that moment, you have this wave of, this isn't right. You automatically succeed the wisdom save, that feeling of like, Almost the feeling of questionable dread on how you feel about Mortar. Mm. You begin to think, what exactly did Mortar do? This individual's a commoner by all standpoints. Like, one shot from his gun would kill him. So why hasn't it? At the same stage, he has pushed this man beyond his limits. Far beyond them. There's incredible sadism there. I don't know if this is a logical leap or not, mm -hmm. but I wasn't there. I wasn't awake for most of the snap situation, mm -hmm. but I was there for some of it. Yeah. Snap was very kind and gentle. He was the kind of person who got things done and was very kind and gentle to you guys. Yes. Mm. Can I detect thoughts? Yeah. See if I can see the cause of this, why they're feeling like this. Okay. Roll me a wisdom save. You will learn okay. stuff, but this is a wisdom save required. Yes. As as this is happening, I'm going to try and bend down and comfort him as best I can. Okay. Roll me a... 14. Okay, 14. That will fail, by the way. Uh, go ahead. I'll say, Vinny, go ahead and roll me... I was going to say inspiration. <laughs> You're gonna roll with inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying um, uh, give me inspiration. No, <laughs> no, yeah. no. It's I thought, that's why I laughed. Now. That's no. why I laughed. I'm sorry. No. Oh, that's worse. That's a three. That's fine. Oh, yeah. You take you take the eight still, but Vinny, I'll say go ahead. I'm trying to say what check this would be. Persuasion makes yeah, the just... most sense. Because it's the idea of trying to convince someone they're okay. So I will say go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. But if you feel it would be more apt to roll something else, you're welcome to suggest it. As for you, Curve. You cast Detect Thoughts. And you get this ability from your, he from your hellish heritage, don't you? your once per day as a um because the kind of teeth yes. you are yeah you otherwise read this individual's mind and in that moment you almost replay the events with a lot more marred scarring you otherwise see from the perspective of this tinkerer he sat up in bed after hearing the sound of shattering and rummaging below. As he came downstairs, wielding what looked to be a dagger in that moment, almost prepared to fight for his wares in that moment. As he otherwise came around the corner, as he came around the corner, you watch as Mortar puts the gold onto the de onto the countertop 
takes the leg and you see that he's currently fitting it to himself. As the Tinkerer otherwise protests, stepping forward as if in, as if challenging Mortar for what he's doing, you watch as Mortar looks at him, snaps his fingers, and you watch as the man's vision changes. You watch as the man begins to scream, clutching his fingers to his ears and his head, and in this moment he falls to the ground and begins to curl up, and you begin to see the visions of his madness. You see triangles and teardrops, the same symbols over and over again, mixed with the sound and the screech of pain. You have heard the sound of souls being torn apart in hell. This is not too dissimilar. You feel this man's insanity begin to break, snapping one thread at a time, like a chord and malicious chorus taking place. And your hand begins to shake. Your concentration breaks. And due to the failed wisdom save, I'd like you to roll me a d20. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. That's a 19. 19. In this moment, you begin to see those symbols in your eyes. You begin to see the vision of it. Two interlocking triangles with a teardrop shape in the middle, which I will draw happily for you. There you go. There's the symbol on tabletop for you. You are seeing that it's over Illuminati. and over and over again. You are oh, seeing fuck. it. <laughs> you are seeing it everywhere. In Feel every safer. knot of wood. Yeah, I was about to say Phil <laughs> I can change the symbol if you want. Uh, no, no, I no. It. It's a oh, lovely love symbol. It. symbol. It's I a great symbol. We it, like the symbol, and also we was, like our jokes. It was easy and we like to inspiration. draw. Um, <laughs> 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 I planned this out beforehand, and I was like, what's something easy to draw on tabletop? <laughs> and I made this. Um, hey. so. can, I, can I do a, a very quick bit? <laughs> Depends. What? Do you have inspiration to spend for this bit? <laughs> I'm fair. Yep. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember if I do or not. I think I, you could give some to me. If Make you like. the bit no. anyway. That's fine. <laughs> just, I'm just like imagining like when, when we event. I'm gonna knock. On, I'm gonna knock Mortar unconscious, and then I'm just going to do. Open your eyes, Mortar. You, and like do the whole bit from Breath of the Wild. Oh, no. I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then Vinny just turns around and goes, Oh, you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly Mortar's on the cart. I All used right. to be a dickhead like you before I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> <laughs> Shot uh, myself in the leg. Mortar just lost his knee entirely. He, he, he went oh, one step knee. further. He always has to one up. So. <laughs> so. Sorry, Mortar. Um. So in this moment, you begin to see that symbol over and over again, everywhere. For until this this effect disappears, you have a minus 1d4 to all of your rolls. Oof. As you, are, as you are affected by Bane for the foreseeable ah. future. Vinny, what did you get Sorry, on the persuasion? So, for persuasion, that was a total of 19. So, um, as Curve is looking into his mind, um, uh, just sitting down next to him, mm -hmm. one arm wrapped around his shoulder, kind of talking into his ear, not, um, not in a, a whisper, but just in a, a, just a quiet, as comforting a voice as I can. Okay. It's all right gone now. No one's going to hurt you here. He visibly seems to calm. 
but I'll say that both you and Romulus, with your passive insights being quite high for both of you, you pick up on the fact that he keeps glancing at the dagger that he brought with him. It seems to be just on the floor nearby, and he keeps glancing at it. You're not entirely I'm... sure, but with your insight, Romulus, with what you know, with what you figured yeah. out, you figure out he is in some way going to potentially attempt to harm himself unless you put get him into a safe environment. I'm going to take that dagger and put it under a box or something, okay. and then I'm going to. What race is this individual? Uh, he, if I remember correctly, your tinkerer was a. If I remember correctly, he was a he was a dwarf, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's a dwarf, I believe. Cool. Yeah. He's one of the races I can feasibly pick up. I yeah. pick him up. Um and i'm just going to have a look around is there like a is this like a shop connected to a living space yes or there is no? right behind the so there's the workshop which is also like the main shop floor and then there is a set of staircases there's a set of staircase behind that seems to lead up to his home i am going to start heading up and move this individual to his home because Whatever is going on with Mortar, this is someone who is in need right in front of us. I'm not going to just leave them. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go up uh, and attempt to get this individual settled into either bed or in a in a comfortable chair or something of that ilk. Okay. You otherwise head up to his room, placing the... Um, placing the, the Dwarven Tinkerer into his bed and you get him comfortable in this moment you can I'll say go ahead and make me a persuasion check with advantage with, this is from Vinny's successful role previously um, I'll say the DC has been lowered due to the nature of the previous it successful check. It should be check. noted I'm not good at these <laughs> No, that's fine, but with advantage and the DC has been lowered. This is more to if he'll feel comfortable after you've gone. That's a nine. That's that's the best I've got. Um, I'll say with your two. passive insight, you can pick up that he seems to be... As much as your comfort of being here seems to be bringing him ease, you believe that the moment you leave, he's going to potentially go into a bad state again. He can't be left alone at this moment. Okay. Okay. Do I still have Eugene and Filch? Yeah, you always have them with you. Same with well, Jeff. I don't know if Eugene came, uh, Filch came back yet. What happened to him? He died. <laughs> when? Um, I think this was where when the whole thing happened underground with Carvern. Yeah, he, they come back every day. I felt like he took a bit longer because he was having an upgrade. Uh, no, it's just that um, he couldn't transform during that time. Okay. So you still got, got him back. Um, I wonder if giving Eugene <laughs> will help. Oh, good lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want to roll me a uh, persuasion check for you, and uh, this won't be with advantage because it's a bird, and I will roll persuasion check from Eugene. Oh, this is not good. What did you get? One sec, I've got to figure it all out. Because that <laughs> would be a 16, but now I've got to roll my... A minus d4. Oh no. Where's the defaults? There. Just the left one? Minus one, so Minus fifteen. One. Fifteen. Vinny seems to have brought him some comfort. And the individual seems to be in a state that from what Romulus can tell isn't going to be in a great way. You have the ingenious idea and you grab Eugene and you take him up and you place Eugene next to him like it's a cuddly toy. Eugene, with a 17 minus 1 for a 16, 
collapses and in this moment pretends he's a cuddly toy. Oh. And with your 15, the dwar uh, the dwarven individual begins to kind of squeeze Eugene and almost closes his eyes as if wishing everything was... This was all a bad dream. Mm -hmm. I'm it seems to be working, but who knows how long. I mean, Eugene can probably keep him occupied for as many hit points as he has. I'm going <laughs> to... Uh... Which is... Uh... He has one hit point. He will be... Uh, the dwarf will be comforted for one hour before Eugene dies from being squeezed too hard. For this rate, we're going to be here all day. Yeah. Is there we're going to have to find anyone... somewhere to take this guy. I don't want to move him away from a place of comfort at this point in time. That's probably going to make things worse. True, but he also has... Does anyone have any sleep-related stuff? Um, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can I, can I command someone to sleep? You could certainly try. And how long would that last? That's actually an incredibly good question. Sorry, <laughs> I need... <laughs> well, you're like, you're using, like, command. It's, it's a single word. It's not harmful. In theory, it yeah. should work. I was going to say, like, the intent is not harmful hmm. either, and this, this guy sounds exhausted. <laughs> like, he sounds yeah. like he's been through. In this instance, he'll be willing to do so. I will say in most cases, command cannot be used for this purpose, but in this instance, he would be willing to let this happen. It does say the duration is one round. Yes. So he so would... So that's not a long sleep. So it's not no, but if he's sleeping, there's no saying he'll necessarily wake up. This is true. It's one of those where command in this moment will force him to go to sleep, and I will then roll to see if he wakes back up. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, so he will okay. willingly fail the saving throw as you just command him to sleep. And now I'm going to roll a wisdom save for him against... What is your spell save DC, Mortar? Fifteen. Fifteen! He has the stats of a regular tinkerer, so he has a plus one to this. That is a fifteen plus one. So with a sixteen, he remains asleep. And... But Eugene is firmly stuck within the individual's arms. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's probably a net gain for the party. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Right. We'll have to. We'll have to come back and check back in on him. But if he's stable for now, we need to go and find more stuff. Can't let him do this to anyone else. I assume we've moved out of the room and let yes. very quietly. I'd say you've probably the, moved the to the talking. you've probably moved to the shop front. Alright. Okay. Um You I will say as you're kind of as you've come downstairs, you see that Kat has is still kind of standing there. But you watch as you hear otherwise crunching underfoot. Thankfully, you arrived when they did, as you watch as two two Rhyme Wardens walk in, halberds lowered, both of them kind of just looking in at this room and seeing what's going on. And you can see what looks to be one of the elemental conjurers at the back currently holding seemingly an attack position with a massive ice elemental behind them. I'm going to put my hands up immediately. Okay. Smart. I'm going to try. We didn't do this. We've just made sure that the proprietor, who was extremely distressed, is upstairs, now asleep. Um, I believe some sort of mental effect has been applied to them. We believe it to be the work of one of our allies, um, who appears to be under the thrall of something. I don't, I don't know all the details, but an, a mental... A mental torture was used against this, the proprietor of this look, of this shop, um, and that's why we took them upstairs for, the, for them to rest. I do not think it is safe for them to be alone, but obviously we want to prevent our ally from causing anyone harm. Wrong I think that about covers it. Wrong persuasion check. 
Can I have advantage because it's all very true and I'm being so good with with guards now? True. And he's just being the goodest boy. I'll Take say... the one on the left hand side if no. He's, he's a very good boy. Well, the left hand side is. Well, it's a left hand side. Right. <laughs> Same either way. I was going to say this would just be probably a straight roll due to the fact that, yes, you're telling the truth, but you're trying to just convince the guards of that. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Either way, 16 was the one on the left, so that was always going to be the one. Yeah, so, yeah, cool. Okay. Um, actually, uh, Cat, make me a wisdom saving throw unless you wish to fail. Yeah. That's an open uh, thing. Hang, do I get shit. advantage on this with Not, Billy's thing? No, because it's uh, checks only. It's only abilities. Okay. Mm. DC uh, is 15. Actually, no. DC is 16, so. Well. Oh, I know. Magic Wonderful World on my character. No, that's Enter. Give me a sec. <laughs> I haven't been drinking. Freak. Failed. Okay. You feel a presence dive straight into your mind as you understand that the cryomancer outside has just used detect thoughts on you. In this moment, you can see what they are learning from this. They're learning that you did just arrive here, that you are chasing your friend Mortar. They've seen that this individual has summoned something and it attacked you. And they also see the guilt-ridden nature that you believe it's your fault. Before you w feel almost this snap within you. And you watch as they visibly step back. And from the even from inside, as you're looking outside, the individual steps back. Let's out a little cough, and you watch as a little bit of blood leaves their mouth. As you feel the creature in your arm punches them out of your mind. Oh, Physically forcing them out of them. At which point you watch as they kind of, like, they cough into their hand. As Romulus, you're otherwise saying this, the two guards, they take note and they relax a little bit. They're still kind of at the ready in case you try to charge them or something. There is only one real exit from this building, it seems. Yeah. As they're otherwise kind of holding this pose, you watch as one of them turns, hearing the sound of their friend coughing, turning back, and then looks back in the room. What did you do? You Honestly, I've got no one eye on that one. I've got no informa information on that one. Anyone? Well, I'm clueless. We all just got down completely here. Completely unsettled cats. Like, why would you go in my head? How would you go in there? Oh, okay, okay. So I think at which point that your friend very reasonably tried to go in, uh, use the tech thoughts. That does not end well if it's used on cat over here. The cryomancer in this instance, as you're otherwise trying to say this, the guard, one of the guards, otherwise points forward, and in this moment you otherwise speak but no words come out as silence is cast on this entire area i'm just gonna like as they look uh, like put my hands up like oh for fuck's sake as they look back there is almost a muttering and a pointing towards cat i'm gonna let you decide how this resolves i would like you all to roll for initiative and see where things go as the guards seem to be aware of what is going on and are now in the action of detaining you are going to be in the action of detaining you should you resist they will fight with intent to knock you out i think we have to fight back guys i think precisely the opposite Really? Uh, I think depending on how much these people stress us out, Cat might not have an okay. option. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the thing is, it's down to whoever rolls first. That's going to set the tone. I got oh, going no. as high as it's yeah. going to set the tone. So, going to the initiative order. Twenty-five plus twenty to fifth. Twenty-five to twenty. Uh, Twenty-two. 
Okay. Uh, there we are. 20 to 15? 19. 15. Oh, Romulus? Oh, goodness, Vinny's going first. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Mm. We'll have to see. Depends on what I roll. Yeah, we'll find out. <clears throat> Vinny, you're going first. You're in an area Ooh. of silence cast by the left guard at this point. What do you do? Okay, are they attempting to move into the building at this point? They're standing at the doorway, and you can see that both of them have otherwise reached for a set of shackles, and they're preparing to restrain you all. They'll be making their actions on their turn. Okay. Uh, the the box that uh, Mortar's leg was in that's mm -hmm. still on the floor down here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, walk over to it and pick it up and uh, toss it to the ground at their feet. Okay. Since in the silence, I can't talk. Yeah. Doesn't make a thud as it hits the ground. Go ahead and make me... This will just be a flat persuasion check, as you're basically providing evidence, but you're also unable to enlighten them on what this evidence is, so advantage and disadvantage will cancel out. Okay. I'll say this is your action to grab to do all of that in that one action. Hmm. Okay. Total. Okay. Uh, that's a thirty-one in total. As I do this, I. I try to make my posture as non-threatening as possible, but like hands well away from weapons. But I'm gonna try to fix the guard with as as intense of a stare as I can, and try and get a, get across the fact that like there is a sense of urgency here. Okay. You throw the box onto the ground. The two guards in front of you kind of look at the box, see the name on the front of it, and then. After kind of the mention of Mortar, the name coming up multiple times, providing them with this evidence, you see that they relax. You note that the two the two of the halberds relax. You watch as one of them kind of gestures again, almost in an opposite direction to the way that they seem to cast the spell, and you watch as the silence is temporarily removed, as if it's more of a aura, shall we say. Okay. Are we able to? Are we in like still an initiative of like people? This will be an initiative order. Is that your turn, Vinny? Uh, if I have a little time at the end of my turn to mm -hmm. say something quickly, go for it. Right. I appreciate this is a difficult situation. It looks bad, but you haven't seen the state of the guy upstairs. He's in a really bad way. And the person who did it is still out there. Okay. I'll say with that 31, they take that information in. Almost going, okay, something has happened here. There is quite possibly a misunderstanding, but evidence has been provided and they're willing to listen. Communications have now opened. They are not necessarily straightway letting you go. But they are, by all accounts, no longer going to be aggressive, with the exception of the cryomancer, whose turn is next. Cat. Oh, fuck. Roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. And who would be the next most dangerous? No, probably just Cat. They're folk they are five focused on Cat, so go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw. Five. You are paralyzed by hold person. At the end of their turn, the otherwise kind of stepping back, kind of coughing up a little bit of blood, wiping it away, they point inwards, 
and you watch as this icy spike erupts from the ground towards Cat with the intent to impale her. This is the ice elemental t- making an it's... attack. Uh, Cat is within five feet of me, right? You've just come down the stairs. She'd probably be within t- five, ten feet. I'll say, go ahead and roll me. This will be a contested initiative. Um, I'll say I'll be rolling for the elemental here. You are looking to beat. That is a natural 20 on the elemental's part. So I need a natural 20. Yeah, you need a natural 20. You've done it before, man. (laughs) I don't know his tower. I'm protecting cat. Oh, so close. I'm going to reaction cloud cloud rune it then. Who's the new target? Oh, fuck. Okay, now uh, I have a question. We've gone through this before. It has to target a new target. It does have to target a new target. This counts as the ice elemental attacking, right? Yes. Then it's targeting me. Okay. No. Now. You're not even raining. No, I'm not. I need to double oh, check. No. Heritor and Trinidex are just outside as well. <laughs> it's. Oh, yeah, but... after your turn, both of them are going to react then to you being attacked because they don't know what's going oh, on. God. They saw these guards show up and they were like, oh, cool, guards are here. And then they just see them casting spells and you're paralyzed and they're like, oh, no, that ain't happening. It's like, hell no. Nah. So, um, for confirmation, that was a natural 19 to hit Cat with the rest of the stuff. I just had to make sure it wasn't a crit. Because paralyzed is only a crit if it's in melee, which this is not. This is a ranged attack. So, you take. Let me get my d10s here. Bad roll so far. That's good for all of you. You take 18 points of cold damage. Four low, uh, three low rolls, and a good roll on the last one. As you take 18 points of cold damage, the spike shoots inwards to aim at Cat, and you watch as it would hit her, but you, with your cloud room, kind of redirect it, pulling it into yourself as it otherwise strikes into your chest. You take it. It hurts, but it was necessary. At that moment, one of the guards kind of turns around and otherwise shouts a command, and you watch as the ice elemental kind of almost looks at the caster and then looks at the guard and seems confused. And the guard will have spent his reaction. Next up in the initiative order, Cat. Roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. Ten? Ten. That is still a fail, so hold person is still present. However, you hear in your mind, Give me control. I can get him back for you. That is freaking out right now. Oh, he can Cause... help. Last time it communicated to her, it had pinned her. It paralyzed her. Held her in place. How much is she seeing this as the elementals holding her or the casters holding her in place over the creature is holding her in place at the moment? You aren't sure. You saw the caster cast the spell and then you were held in person by what seems to be a hold person spell, but... And then the creature's talking to her. And now the creature's talking to you, and there seems to be otherwise shouting in communication between the guards and the cryomancer, as if telling them to stop. So you suspect they might have dropped whole person concentration, but you're not sure. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. She's going to try and move, desperately try and move. You can't. Panic. And then she's going to call out to Terador to help her. She's just freaking out. This is mentally? Um, yes. Okay. You call out mentally to Terador. End of your turn, Terador emerges from the streets and is going to try and attack the Cryomancer. Go ahead and make me two attacks versus the Cryomancer, please. Screen. 
Oh, that's right. It sucks, doesn't it, having only one screen? Yeah, it couldn't be me. You can't have all your summon tabs <laughs> open. <laughs> oh, literally, I've got all of the things I'm slowly scrolling through here. Uh, the two... Two slams, so they're both plus seven. Both of them will hit. Um, Trelodex doing Trelodex thing. Trelodex... Come on, no. Yeah, Trelodex will realise what's going on, kind of seeing this, kind of taking in the surroundings. Is going to, for now, I will say land and make his presence known, but is not going to be attacking, is prepping for whatever comes next. Okay. So, go ahead and roll damage for me, please. It's the crime answer. Oh, it's 2d10. 2d10 plus 6. Go ahead. They're the green ones, right? Mm-hmm. 18 plus 12, 30 damage. Okay. No, no, 6, 6 itself. It's, um, oh, two lots plus of three. 2 lots of 3. Okay. 24. Just, just cat scream. Just leave me alone. As her concentration breaks on hold person, you can move again as you shout out, leave me alone. In this she moment, wounded. she's wounded, yeah. You yeah, she, look at she's the. She's making a run. The oh, you're making a run. Okay. Yeah, she's she's running to behind Trelodex and Terrador. She's they're okay. the safest things we can find at the moment. Okay, trying to run through the door, to the others. Uh, one of the guards is going to make an attack of opportunity because Polearm Master. Fine. Can I intervene at all? <laughs> You've used your reaction already. Oh, true. Um, whereabouts is it? Are we all standing? You're all standing, it's a small shop, so it, you're all effectively so within intercept? five, ten feet of each other. How are you going to do so? Is this the feature you're using, interception? Yes. So what does that do? Ooh, uh, damage is 1d10 plus 4 reduced. Okay. If cat is in with fi within five feet of me. Okay, go ahead and roll me the 1d10. I'll say, because this is Polar Master as she moves forward, you'd be within range at this point. So go ahead and roll me the d10. It's a green one. Okay. Ooh. What'd you get? That's four, that's twelve. Twelve? The damage is nullified entirely. As they make nice the strike guy. forward with the halberd, you otherwise step into it, summoning your scythe and otherwise redirecting the attack upwards away from Cat. As Cat rushes past as best as she can, the other one's already spent his reaction to tell the elemental to stop. As Cat rushes out of the door, the cryomancer is there, and you watch as she goes down onto one knee. And in this moment, Cat, you feel her weakness in this moment, and you feel this niggling at the back of your mind that all it takes is one command from Trelodex and she's dead. She doesn't want to... She doesn't... She just wants to be safe and wants to save her friend. Okay. Um. So, yeah, she's... Basically, she's not running away, she's hiding behind Trelodex's door, and okay. laying on the floor there, and that is where she's going to stay, so that's it, she's not doing anything, she's going to stay hidden. Okay, you do that. Next up in the initiative order, it's one of the guards. I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I would like Cat to go ahead and roll me a d20 and add 7 to it. And I would like... Unless you're proficient in intimidation. And... Me. Yeah. And I would like Romulus and Vinny both to make persuasion checks for me, please. Oh boy. Flat? Yep. Um, is there any chance, would it go smoother if I were to perhaps cast Zone of Truth? That would be something you could okay. do on your turn to potentially try and help. But in this instance, oh, is, it's more of a... Oh, are we still going in? Apologies. Yeah, this is a... So far, Romulus and Vinny are the two that have shown pacifism in the nature of this. With Romulus redirecting an attack into him, and with Vinny showing evidence to try and alleviate the situation. 
Meanwhile, you've been kind of neutral because you redirected attack away from your friend, but you haven't shown direct hostility. Meanwhile, Cat has shown yeah. Meanwhile, Cat no has problem. shown direct hostility, and we're using the creatures modifier for the time being. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's a sixteen. Sixteen, uh, Vinny or Romulus? Did you get higher than that? No, I got a thirteen. <laughs> I was really proud of getting a 15 off of a 3, but unfortunately <laughs> that still isn't good enough. Wait, 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 do you have like an inspiration or anything? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Worth the fucking try. Chris, it's a bit of a stretch, but as it's trying a good to get shout. To... Was there making his presence known? Could that give Cat advantage? No, oh. you don't. We, you, you're already doing good. <laughs> or you're oh, already I'm beating like... us. You're the problem. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, so just for clarification, the intimidation that you've just made means that these guards have now become temporarily hostile just to Cat. Oh. oh, right. Which means now, Cat, these people are hostile to you because of what you've done, but to the rest of the party, they just see the rest of the party as mixed in it, but not the problem. Oh, valid. Okay. So with that, the guard is going to turn around and is going to make three attacks against you. Oh, Christ. So. Um, yeah, first one. Natural one. Second one. I thought that was another natural one then. No, it's a 12. Um, uh, 12 plus. Yeah, 12 plus there to hit. What's your OC at the moment? Because you haven't cast Titan Armor yet? I cast it when we were leaving the mansion. Oh, then make me a wild magic check. Make me a wild magic check. Okay. Although we didn't roll for that one. Oh, okay. I rolled 2d20. Oh, you're fine. I that was no, cool. the other one was for summoning trailer decks. You don't, or not trailer decks, oh, um, okay. Terrador. You don't usually have to, but you're on a ley line node, so it's. All magic oh, is a bit right. unstable. That here. makes sense. Okay, yeah. I thought it was the two for trailer no. decks and the armor. No. Right. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so, the first one misses, the second and the third attack hit. Uh, um, how much? Uh, so the first one, or uh, the second attack hits you on a 19. Mm -hmm. Are you shielding, or? I, I am gonna shield, yes. Okay, go ahead and roll wild magic for me then, please. And does this take you below half? You're fine. 18... This okay. takes me to take off shield, which first level. And... and the second hit is a 23. Does that hit you? Uh, no, I have 24. 24. Okay. As the guard rushes forward, taking three swings, the first one miss. Uh, the first one missing is Terrador goes to intercept. The other two on their own swings against you. You cast shield, causing the two attacks to glance off entirely. That will be that guard's turn. Next. Curve, you're up. You see them being hostile towards Cat. Okay. Um, mm, I So one possibility is I cast Zone of Truth to hopefully be able to do some convincing. Like I could put it on Vinny, for instance, and hope that he can convince them to leave us alone. I could do like a magical darkness so we can maybe escape. Or I can just start swinging. <laughs> you don't need to worry about me. We're gonna just be the worst here. <laughs> I'm just napping somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Back, back in back in the mansion, Mortar's just <laughs> Mozart crawls out from under the bed like, ah, oh, there's that uh, uh, coin I misplaced. Snack <laughs> <laughs> climbs back into bed. <laughs> I know <laughs> Harlan is bed. muted, so does anyone else have any uh, any thoughts? On what I'm just to trying do? to wait for my turn without... I don't want to do the thing where I end up being like, here's what we should do in this exact order. <laughs> so I'm trying it, to hold myself it, back. No, that's fair. In, thing is, with it, with yeah, that as a good note, I will say this. Rebecca, it's your character. It's your choice. 
Okay, yes, so but I, I, you know, we're all friends here. I don't want to fuck everything up, you know, like Kat's I've, been doing. Rebecca, <laughs> I've, I've already, I've already See gone later, so far down the rabbit hole already. <laughs> I'd go for it. Like, do, what, what would Curve do if Kat was threatened? Like, if you blatantly saw someone threatening Kat? Yeah. You can tell in the situation. I, I'll say you've been given the information that you know. Romulus and Vinny have actively made attempts to alleviate the guards to not have any issues with them. The creature within Cat has caused an issue, and Cat is now reacting to it defensively, but the guards are taking it as hostility. Because she has not listened to them in terms of stay where you are sort of thing, and the implications of we're going to discuss this. So I'll say it depends. What would you want to do? Would I be able to capture all, if not most, of uh, the guards in a, what would it be, a 15 foot square? 15 foot square? Um, from this angle, um, yes. You wouldn't catch the, the element. Oh, for fear is this? Or... Sphere, sorry. Oh, sphere. sphere. <laughs> and you said uh, you said it's a radius, right? Yes. Yeah, easily. I think I'll do that, and then we can hopefully. I mean, is there like a window in the back we can jump through? No, there's no windows Never mind. in the back. There's there's a window upstairs <laughs> that you can jump out the back of the building of onto the next door's roof, but. And that's going to be another load of fucking problems, isn't it? Oh, we can't make this jump. Oh, we're going to die if we fall. Ugh. But Curve would not think like that. So we're going to do darkness. Okay. okay. Centred on. Centred on where the guards are. So okay. they hopefully no longer see us and we can make a swift escape. Okay. The crying answer. Seeing you cast a spell, is going to use her reaction to counter spell. Uh, nope. No? No, thank you. Not today. What are you doing? Nothing. I just don't want it to happen. You just don't <laughs> want it to happen? Well, what level are you casting Zone of Truth at? Well, not Zone of Truth. Zone um, of uh, darkness. darkness. Oh, well, I suppose I should cast it a bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's using your warlock spell slots, then yes, it has to be a set level. Yep. Which is this? I believe because you're five, you're five in warlock and four, five in paladin now, so I believe it's third. Third, then you know. Which means counter spell automatically succeeds. Yeah. Okay. As you attempt to cast <laughs> darkness or some form of spell at them. There is this moment where you feel this icy nature just strike against your hand and you kind of clutch your hand in that moment as the magic has recoiled and spent. The uh, caster... but Have you considered this? I'm resistant to cold. That's why you take no damage. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, there wouldn't be damage anyway, but oh well. <laughs> and is that your turn? Are you moving? You or... know what? It, I think it's probably for the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Romulus. Um, she will move, no, uh, sorry. sorry, she will move and start making her way up the stairs as far as she can go in case she needs to make a jump. Okay, you otherwise dart around the back and up the stairs. Okay, okay end of go. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right then. What does that tell me? Curve, go ahead and roll me a... D20, please. And That's a 19. 19, okay. Don't worry about removing the D4. The guards, what? although they spot you leaving, they oh, seem to I pick do. up on the intention that you're potentially going to get the uh, the owner of the establishment to try and get you to, or get him to convince them, perhaps. That is their current uh, perception of it. They rolled a natural 20 on their insight, and you rolled a 19 on your random check to see exactly what this might result in. So, Can I not make it deception? 
I mean, the 19 is just a... the nine, It's just a flat 19. This was to see if he was going to take it poorly or not. Oh, okay. if, if he was going to take it poorly, he was going to assume that you're either running or going to kill the owner of the establishment. So. <laughs> so. It's guessing. With that, Romulus, you're up. The last guard is unfortunately got a uh, natural three on his initiative. <laughs> Which means he got an eight. All right, then. I am going to come about this very simply. Romulus is going to be coming in with intimidation. Uh, which will be using my strength due to the mantle of the dire bear. Yep. And it's going to go very simply. I am going to draw my weapon. I am going to loudly step forward and slam it on the ground and say, You attempted to use deadly force against a child! There it is. There it is. Whoa. Drop your weapons, or lose your lives! No! Go ahead and roll me an intimidation oh. check. I'll say if you want to expend a rage, I'll let you do it with advantage. Oh, I'm 100% expending rage right now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. There's one thing that pisses Harlan and Romulus off, and that's harming kids. That now, unfortunately, that is only a four plus five. Um, that's only a 23. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll roll these openly, because I think this is a nice tense moment. Guard one, who has already gone and seems to be um, the more tense of the two, who, who attacked Cat and seems to be actively considering her as aggressive. That will fail on an 18, since he is not proficient in wisdom saving throws. He, in this moment, I will say is frightened. Mm -hmm. You see, there is, there is still a sense of duty to him, but there is also a sense of reconsideration. Mm. The cryomancer, I'm going to roll with disadvantage because she is on one hit point. I'm going to say that with a natural <laughs> one, um, mm. she faints. Uh, <laughs> and I will then roll for the ice elemental. Ooh. The ice the elemental. The ice elemental might be fine. Let me double check. With a plus zero, the, yes! <laughs> the ice elemental in this moment gets into a defensive huddle over the cryomancer, as if shielding her from whatever threat you have made, but doesn't seem to be hesitating to attack in the event that you <clears throat> try and kill her. Yeah. And That's finally, and finally, the guard who is next to you, who I am going to have roll with advantage because he is more level-headed, and in this instance he is not necessarily offensive towards either groups. That's he fair. is just considering the situation for what it's worth. It should be noted, they did use, a, like, deadly, objectively deadly force yeah. against the cryo. The cryo. The cryo There's definitely some, mal yes. yeah. Yeah. There's some malpractice here going on. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. In this instance, the one who's level-headed with a 14, I will say, Romulus, do you want them to succeed or not? They seem to be the level-headed one who is almost taking the situation for what it's worth as opposed to anything else. My intent is twofold. I My preferred method is that no one attacks anyone. My secondary uh, want is that if anyone is attacked, that it be me and not Cat. Okay. So I, I would like to allow this individual, if I believe them to be level headed, I would like to allow them to succeed against any fear of me. Yes. But I do want them to consider my words. Yes. I will allow that. They failed to, or they failed what would have been the otherwise wisdom save, but they otherwise consider your words, seeing that there is a clear disparity in what's going on here. In this moment, 
with the ne whose next turn it is, is that level-headed guard. Uh, that level-headed guard, the one who also casts Silence, is going to go over and is going to use a disarming attack on their friend. Okay, and knocks the halberd out of their hand. In this moment, he otherwise turns, looks at you, puts up a hand, as if to say, like, stop, I mean you no threat, and has disabled his, uh, disarmed his ally. I put stagger back on my back. My hands go back up. May we talk like civilized individuals. Agreed. He looks at the other guard who seem to have potentially jumped to conclusions and looks at the elemental and you watch as he raises his hand in that moment and you watch as the elemental kind of scoops up the chromancer and takes a few steps back which are large steps for it hmm. um tend to your friend i do not know <laughs> tend to your friend he otherwise looks at you the level-headed one looks at you looks back at his friend you Go and stand over by the ice elemental. It, he seems to look back, almost objecting, before he just shouts, NOW! As he turns, steps away towards the ice elemental. He puts his halberd on the ground, the level-headed one, puts his halberd on the ground, and in this moment, looks at you, Cat, and looks at Romulus. Okay. I'm going to to take stagger off my back very slowly and place it on the ground as well as a show of yeah i'm i'm doing this just as much as you are we are not putting you in a situation where this is gonna still armed with two other weapons he puts one of his three weapons on the ground that's fair mm. i get the gesture still <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a gesture it's not like a combat complete, starts like... draws the next one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so um in this moment he looks at you looks at cat I will say, unless anybody wants it to be, combat will be over as a temporary ceasefire seems to have taken hold here. Mm -hmm. The level-headed one seems to be taking in all of this information. So, long story short, mental magic does not work well on my ward there because they are unfortunately dealing with a curse. This he is a known factor. It is being looked into by the tower uh, to, that's technically true right like that yeah. part of the tower yeah. is involved in he that. looks at cat looking back at you you can see there's an, a sense of recognition as you know cat's entire arm is missing and possessed by this massive shadowy claw her back yeah. two legs are just not there and currently sharp made of sharp bone and shadow and there are crystals growing all over her seemingly to cover sections of corruption mm. he seems to pick up when, the fact that yes she is cursed and whatever happens when your, is yeah <laughs> when your friend i looked at the cryomancer used mental magic to try and delve into my ward's mind there are automatic uncontrollable defenses understood he for looks... what happened here, I point behind me. One of our allies appears to have been overtaken by eight admittedly similar but legally distinct thing unrelated. And there's a lot going on right now. There's so much we'll going have to, on. We'll have to just give you the simple version. <laughs> They're still out there and it is unsafe for anyone they encounter, potentially. They did something. I don't know what, but it is of the mental magic nature. And it was... The proprietor of this establishment is not doing well mentally after it. Obviously, we would like to make sure that they are all right. I have placed them upstairs. We have left with them one of our familiars as both company and to keep an eye on them. We've sent them to sleep in the hopes that rest may calm their weary mind. 
You are welcome to check on them. I only ask that if you do so, you make sure you have a way to get them back to sleep afterwards, as I fear they would harm themselves if they were to be given time alone. You watch as he puts his hand up. Not necessarily is a rude interruption, but puts his hand up for no, a no, moment. No. And you watch as he I looks... Immediately... He looks to one side before he says, There's a situation down in the lower city by the Tinkerer's Ward. If you want to investigate it further, you're welcome to join us. He says that out loud. You know ascending when you see one. Sorry. Please continue. Is that all you wanted to say? Mormonus? Sorry, um, apologies. I uh, do... Do you believe that individual to be our individual? Because it seems not unlikely. For what? The... The the incident in the Tinkerer... Oh, oh, they, he was sending a, a... He was sending that to someone else. Yes. Right, I'm understanding that. Okay, right. Sorry, yeah. I thought he was receiving something and responding. No. no, I get you. I'm fine. We are fine. I look for everyone. For other guards to join us, just please refrain from committing any acts of violence or towards anyone. He and look, he looks at you, not a guard per se. One of the higher ups. He nods. One of the Ice Kings. Fair enough. They sent. They said they sent to disturbance, and they asked me for further information, given I was in the area. Well, you are welcome to provide them whatever information you desire. Again, just mental magic used on her is not a good experience for whoever tries it. Equally, I would rather this be dealt with peacefully and without any more. I point at my chest dangerous violence of course i'm not sure what uh, what encouraged her to do that as i said it's not pleasant for the caster we must for the well-being of the people in this city locate whatever is in control of my ally his name is mortar i put gesture to the box I do not know what it is, but I know it is not... It is an entity that is in control that is not the individual. Mm -hmm. But I cannot speak more than that. I do not know. Okay. You watch as... Or rather, you hear, first of all, and I'd say probably Cat, brought, it's brought to your attention first by Trelladex, who notes this. As you watch as an individual begins to float down, robes otherwise bustling in what seems to be the cold air as they float down from quite possibly the tower. You're not quite sure. Their trajectory seems as if they've come out of nowhere. As they begin to slowly descend towards the ground and stop maybe a few inches off of the pavement itself. And you watch as alongside them also floating down are these not quite ice elementals. They aren't as heavy and as robust as the large ones that the um, Cryomancer was using. They seem to more float, and you can tell that they are more well equipped with what looks to be magical armor that otherwise coats their form. The individual otherwise looks to you. You can see that they otherwise have a veil that covers the majority of their... Or covers almost all of their face, save for the eyes, but you can tell due to the shape of their body, they seem to be a draconian of some form. What colour scales, you're not sure. And you watch as they lift, mm. a, they lift a gloved hand, and you watch as a orb appears above uh, above them in this moment. They hold, they hold it there maybe a few seconds before looking at 
Cat, looking at you, looking at Vinny. Curve, have you done anything during this time? Um, I think Curve will have gone up to the room of the man again, making sure not to wake him up, and look out the, uh, look out the window up there for any signs of anything. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. Do you remember the minus d4? So that will be an 11 plus. Perception is a 2. So, so that's just 13. a 13. You look out the back window. You can see that there is a small rooftop uh, upon this next section. Kind of a slanted rooftop. And there is a street beyond. Um, you can see that there are more workshops in the distance with the full moon kind of providing a kind of a bright luminescence to the area or the near full moon I should say. As you're there you hear or you watch as from the distance this form begins to shoot towards the building flanked by two more of these will look to be ice elementals as they begin to slow arriving at the uh, just outside the shop where you currently are. What would you like to do? Your party downstairs seem to be talking and there doesn't seem to be a conflict at this current time. You almost certainly heard what Romula said, given it was shouted yeah. with yeah. a thousand decibels. <laughs> oh yeah, and there are plenty of windows and people who are now looking out of their windows at what's happening. She teeters on just going out of the window and going on her own to try and find Malta, but she sort of just huffs, rolls her eyes and thinks, no, oh, stupid idea. And she turns back and starts to, goes to rejoin the, uh, the group downstairs. Okay. Because she thinks they're going to need backup with whatever's coming. Okay. You go downstairs and... As this individual casts whatever this spell is, you feel almost this sense of presence before they, before the spell disappears in that moment. They look at the guard. The guard nods in response. Before the, this new figure, whoever they are, looks towards all of you, looks to you specifically, Romulus. Thank you for your kind words at helping the proprietor of this establishment. You may go, but please try to not cause any further disturbances, if possible. Your friend has not made a splash, and I do not know where he is. It, it might be a long shot, but can we search this place for clues be as you may just don't linger survival i check i guess Thank to you. search and then go immediately getting out of here because i do not want to hang around this any longer than i have to right <laughs> go for it uh, if romulus is doing this then i'm gonna give him a bardic inspiration okay thank you kindly is that a d8 uh d8 now yeah yes. i'm gonna roll Press and then we're gonna see if it's worth it it's not worth it. It's not worth it right now. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, well, you still have it. We have 10 minutes to spend it. I have 10 minutes, okay. Yeah. Noted. Looking around I the establishment I'm going to pick up moment. Stagger, just so that we've established that. Yeah, no, that's going fine. Back on the back. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Looking around, there doesn't seem to be any signs of, like, there's no signs of a scuffle. There's no signs of where Mortar may have been. You barely even saw that he entered this place. You genuinely don't know where he's gone. So, the best guess you can think of is that there might be another location you should head to. The guard who seems to be making good sense of it all kind of looks at you, kind of goes over to his colleagues, and or his colleague, and seems to have a word with them before commanding the elemental, and they head off away from here. But the caster seems to be lingering, kind of slightly floating off the ground, just arms crossed, watching what you're doing. I'll say, Cat, 
Given the situation, go ahead and roll me an Arcana check. So that is a 14. 14? You, as you watched this caster cast this spell, it is not a magic that you recognize, nor do you know what how powerful it is, but you could feel the strength off of this caster. They, at the very least, can best you in every manner of magic. They are a powerful individual, and by the sounds of it, from what was said, quite possibly a direct guard or bodyguard to the Ice King themselves. You watch them cast this magic, and you recognize Lithomancy when you see it. You know that Lithomancy's basic understandings are similar to that of a mixture between conjuration and divination, so they probably foresaw what, what happened in the area around here. Yeah. But you don't know the exact nature of what they've done, nor will I say with that role that you'll be getting access to that spell unless you take further training. That's fair. Okay. I I am I'm I fail with my survival check of about seven. Um, but I am going to turn to this individual. Mm -hmm. Apologies for troubling you further. You used uh, divination of used you saw what happened here, I know that much. Do you perhaps know when Mortar, the one that we believe did this, possessed, but yeah. do you know when that happened? The individual looks at you. I can't say I know what or when. All I know is that the proprietor upstairs is as you said, and what you mentioned has taken place very well apologies for uh, taking up your time further anyone else found anything now will give a search go ahead and make me either an investigation or a survival check uh, cat does have the advantage of the enhanced ability of that's still going yep uh, that so will still be going at this time mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely go for it. I mean, I've still got Bane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely shouldn't be the one making yeah. So you have an advantage. Investigation or wisdom? Because with the wisdom... Or the... Wisdom, you get the advantage. So it is, do a my survival. investigation is a plus eight. Ah. Both are good. <laughs> it's up to you. Statistically, I the investigation it's... is better, but there's a little bit more risk with it. Then again, with the way your rolls have been tonight, advantage doesn't matter. You know, you're right. Roll, <laughs> go for the eight. Let, let's go for the investigation. Yeah. Fuck it. Cat's kind of like just trying to keep herself together and trying to work out how the priority is for the save. 17. That's a 17. 17. What I has is prosthetic leg now. You know that much to be the case. You don't see where he necessarily should have gone, but you now know that he is more capable of getting where he might want to go. So, where might the next place he want to go be? Carvern was... Carvern is the only other thing in the city that I can think he might want to interact with to some degree. Hub. 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 That's where I'd go. Down the pub. <laughs> he he just just popped down the pub. From his previous actions when he'd be... Yeah, go for it. Really ...defeated or scared, and see if I can work out right what mm. I could relate to now. Go for it. I'll be, I'll be. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. That was great. <laughs> so what was the total on the history? Ten. Ten? Two. It's a good line of thought. And you think the you think back to where he's been, but you're finding it difficult to connect the dots. I will allow somebody else within the party to make a check of a similar nature in relation to 
I'll say probably in this instance, insight or history would make the most sense. In, an, in a quote-unquote aid towards cat, but making a roll separately. I I would like to make an insight, A, for the statistical likelihood of me doing well, but also because earlier on I got a very good insight, and mm -hmm. I think it's worth capitalizing on that. Okay. Okay. If Yeah, if you want to take the lead on that, then I'm going to take a moment to go over to cat. And I am going to add on the inspiration to this, because I don't I don't want to forget it, and it's, this seems somewhat important. So that is a total of 24. 24. Mortar, correct me if I'm wrong, but Mortar would traditionally find a place of either shadow with some solitude or somewhere high with some solitude. Uh, yeah, 100%. He would go... He would go somewhere that no one would have any reason to go. So, but yeah, somewhere, somewhere high, somewhere dark. Somewhere he can easily manoeuvre and escape from, should need be, but also somewhere secure enough where it would take time for someone to get to kind of a paranoid set of circumstances. With that, I'll say, Romulus, you can probably figure out that maybe either a derelict building or quite possibly just a like a household on the outskirts somewhere where he could potentially like a rooftop or something somewhere high up that he could be hard to reach somewhere where he can be alone i uh, i turn to the reasonable guard because uh, i don't want to be oh, bothering reason the high up person reason right reasonable guard wandered off with the basically he was dismissed along with the others to go back to headquarters and get her okay. looked at Fair, fair. Because she was on one hit point and fell unconscious due to your fear, so... Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's very fair. Hey, look, it's better than the alternative, which was me literally murdering all of them. This uh, is true. Uh, yeah, you, you right. made a cop piss their pants, well done. <laughs> yeah, you know what, that's pretty good. That does feel pretty good. Um, so... He would head for somewhere desolate, somewhere... Where he can be alone, preferably somewhere high up and dark. Um, I'm going to just sort of look around, see if there's anywhere that matches that description. But I am saying this out loud, so if this individual wishes to join in and make any suggestions, I, I am not, I am very, oh, I'm, oh, I'm welcoming them, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not asking them just yet. Uh, okay. I'm going to at least have like a little perce perceive around first. Okay, go ahead and make me a perception check. Oh boy! Uh, that is a uh, dirty 20. Okay, dirty 20. I will say that we will use the role of the individual. Hearing you say this, you follow their gaze as they kind of immediately look towards the edge of the city. They got a natural 20. Mm -hmm. um, which this person's perception is absolutely insane. But they otherwise <laughs> look out towards the edge of the city, and there's a moment of, like, not necessarily recalling information, but kind of fitting the criteria, and you get a sense that they may have pinpointed a good spot for it, and you follow that lead, and you believe you know where to search. The individual looks back at you, doesn't say anything. But I do know where to look. Yeah, you know exactly where would be a good spot to look. And as you otherwise follow their gaze, you can see that there's maybe a cluster of a few houses. As it gets further towards the wall, there are there are seemingly just kind of structured lines of houses with breaks where the main roads otherwise cut through them. And you can see that there are groups of there are a few groups of houses in small clusters there. And you consider one of those with a tall tall building site might actually be good because it's the highest point you can get into the city without being in the tower which you think about and go well he could be at the top of the tower but it would take him a very long time with levitate to get all the mm. way to the top <laughs> um, and he probably would have been seen by now if he'd done that so i'm going as we sort of lock gazes but don't say anything i'm going to nod at this individual and i would just say please allow us to deal with our friend first if you feel guards are necessary to be on the sidelines to deal with us after, fine. I but... have no intention of getting involved. 
Thank you kindly. Your job uh, is your own. Your friend is your trouble. If something goes wrong... Well... We'll see don't if he... let something go wrong. <laughs> yeah. You get, you get the hinted words of don't let anything go wrong because they can't guarantee that you'll get your friend back. Yeah, fair. Okay. <clears throat> In that case, I know where we're headed. Everyone gather up. Let's go. Okay. I think right. that's a good spot if to take. Right, got to lead and let's not waste any time. I was going to say, I will take that moment to take a quick break, I think, for mm. grabbing drinks and snacks and anything else that you might need. So, and by the way, with, have... with that roar, I, yes, I was about to say, you can have inspiration <laughs> before you said anything. You yeah, can yeah, have yeah. inspiration, <laughs> and if you hadn't otherwise done... We were done, all thinking it. If you, yeah, if you hadn't shouted... By the way, if you hadn't like made enough noise to notify other things, there wouldn't have been a loud enough disturbance for that guard to have even noted the disturbance. Fair. Okay. So that action definitely made that situation easier. And with the roll that you got versus their saves, yeah, it went pretty well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Um, I had a moment. I have. I've. I've, I've mm, you know when you fair. start doing an RP bit and you feel like, oh, oh did I take did, it oh, too far? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> no, that, was was good. that was good. I loved it. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, well done. So, everyone, have a quick break, and we'll be back in a moment. And uh, I guess we'll be getting to mortar in a moment. Okay. Meanwhile, mortar. La, 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 oh, don't la, la, worry. La, la, la. When we come back from the break, I'm still my, when we come back from I'm the break, we are going to do. Uh, we're going to rewind the time to witness what Mortar has done. Okay. So, oh. or rather, the yeah. audience will, but nobody else will. Oh, oh. <laughs> fuck. Okay. The audience right. will get to see Mortar. And coming up with this panic attack and then remembering that invisibility potions are good sleep aids. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking oh, hilarious. God. Um, again, he did, he did def, we, we believe he did do the, the whole, you know, terrifying someone into literal yes. suicide. Yes, Cur like Curve like saw it, yeah. In yeah. the mind of the oh, tinkerer. Yeah. 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 I've not, I don't know that, I've not actually no. seen that happen, so I can only go off of what I've seen, which is, we think this is Mortar, and we know that this dude has had something happen to him. It's like, oh no. On the yeah. way, Curve will um, convey some information. Okay. Right. I'll be right back. Yep, I will be right back as yeah. well. And um, actually, before people go, actually, you know what? No, I'll just do it myself. All right, I'm going to move everybody into standby. Um, when, uh, Jamie, you still here? Yeah. When they get back, can you inform them they have been moved to standby? And that I will send Dan in to collect them once me and Dan have finished his bit. Okay, but do you know how roughly how long you're going to be? Ten minutes? Because it's mostly going to be a flashback, so... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Alright, if you're going to say lie, it's probably going to be like the next hour of the plot. Then. <laughs> no, next hour will just end the session. But <laughs> yeah, no, support. probably ten minutes at most should be fine. Right. Awesome. I'll move them to standby and I'll be back in a moment. Yep. Yeah. Nope, that's Dan. Dan stays here. Hello. Hello. Right, I'm gonna be right back. No worries.
I am back. You here? Back. Oh, I'm here. Wonderful. So, Mortar. Let's redo this intro, shall we? See where you were exactly. As do it. As you, Mortar, are in your room, you otherwise talk to Cat. The words sinking in, but beginning to become heavy on your mind and your shoulders. You begin to want to escape and out. You ask Cat to leave, and she does so. As she does, you begin to go into a panic attack, a feeling of raggedness, otherwise crawling across your person as you begin to feel heavy. You watch as you look around and begin to see a symbol beginning to form, a triangle interlocked within another triangle with a teardrop at its centre. You look around and begin to see it, the panic attack becoming more and more frantic and intense. And as the calm motion fades, you hear the sound of Curve knocking on the door as she says your name and the world around you goes black. Your body is slumped as you are kneeling in what you only believe to be mud, tar, you're not entirely sure, but you are kneeling within it. It is cold, and as your hands are draped to either side, you feel weary and ragged. You feel pain throbbing at the back of your mind, your neck, your lungs burn, and you breathe slowly and with shudders with each of those breaths. You hold on to this moment, feeling dread begin to wash over you to a certain extent. And as you are sat there, or knelt there I should say, you feel a pressure on your shoulder. You are too tired to turn your head to look, but somehow you know what it is. A hand of a flayed creature pulls itself up next to you, the hand resting on your shoulder. And in that instant, the pain in the back of your head, your neck, your shoulders, your lungs disappears. The phantom pain of your leg no longer being there, the phantom pain of your arm no longer being there disappears in that moment. The creature begins to step, otherwise leaving not even an imprint within the mud and sludge, pull, walking forward as it does so. Your gaze lifts as much as it can, weary but not pained, as you watch as it steps up and places its hands on the door. You look at it and you feel unpleasantness. Go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Yes, please. Okay. That's a... Ah! Oh, that's a 12. A 12. You look up, yeah. and as you're looking at the creature, you feel a sense of greed about you not a good greed of money or material things in comparison but a sense of distinguishable hate for this creature you look at it and you want your pain back your mind begins to be flooded with thoughts ones that you don't want but are there nonetheless as you begin to feel a want for that pain a deserving and a right for that pain 
as you look at this creature, you feel how dare it take your pain away, that penance that you deserve for everything you've done. Everything you've done. The words linger, the pain not there, only leaving numbness in its wake as your sanity begins to almost ooze from you. The creature pushes the door open, both doors swinging wide open as it strolls in and another strolls out. It steps towards you, slowly sinking into the mud, much as yourself, becoming waist height in the mud adjacent to you as it looks you in the eye, level to level, even though you are kneeling down. You see yourself. You see... Snap. Maybe? Something feels different. Something feels off, almost. As you see this version of you, it says only one thing. We'll keep you safe. We'll make sure there's no more pain. And as it pushes its head, forehead towards your own, they connect and you feel a sense of relief. But the hatred and the numbness still remain. You watch as if from a window as the next events begin to unfold. A sense of remembrance to it, but a sense of twisted nature to it. The symbols are ever present across your vision as you step through the land here. You watch as your body, your person, you, you're not sure, stands within your room, picks up the bundle of clothing, picks up the bundle of clothing with the gun in, within them, not touching the gun by any means, and steps out of the room. You watch as you step, you simply jump and begin to glide and hover, levitate, taking hold as you float over to the other side of the room and land, your feet gently tapping on the floor next to the door. And you step out into the world beyond as the clothes disappear as they leave the mansion, the gun falls into your hand and a spearing pain shoots through your mind. You feel something else, something not to what you have just witnessed take hold. At least that's what it feels like. You watch as you rush through the streets at a quickened pace, dodging out of the scattered here and there guard patrols that don't seem to be as present in the streets given how far up Glasson is compared to the rest of the world. You rush through the streets left and right, knowing full well where you're going, hopping as you do, but seemingly walking on the other leg. Your gaze is almost pulled down by your own thought, the want to know what you're walking on as you see the shadow spawn formed as your leg, stepping forward as you are rushing towards your destination. As you arrive at the door, you plunge your hand through the window, grabbing the handle and plummeting it downwards to open the door from the inside, as the shadow spawn scatters, rushing back from whence it came. The order within your mind to stop them from following you. You otherwise rush into the room, hopping as much as you as need be, over to the box, searching through a few of them before finally finding the leg and beginning to strap it to you. You otherwise feel the presence, a pained and worried presence of somebody coming down the stairs next to you. As you stand there ready, the individual steps down and holds a knife out, brandishing it towards you. A sense of, not necessarily relief, but confusion as they recognise you, and you recognise them. The Tinkerer. Well, this is his shop after all. He looks at you and protests, asking why you have broke into his, 
into his establishment. And as you go to explain, you watch as a symbol appears on his forehead. The same symbol you've been seeing this entire time. And you watch as he grabs the side of his head and begins to cry and scream. You watch as shadows begin to stretch throughout the room, the wood warping, creaking and cracking. As you panic, you flee thinking only of yourself as you have done for years and years. You leave, the ch you leave the shop, rushing down the streets, trying to find anywhere to, to hide, to get away from this. The world around you begins to twist and turn, the feeling of nausea held within your stomach, but not quite there. Not enough to pull itself up and out of your throat and mouth, as you might want to exhale and exercise this pain and madness. You reach a building and quite happily leap up parts of it, climbing up and otherwise swinging through an open window to the inside. You hear the sound of an individual waking at your arrival as you leap upwards into what little rafters there are here. Holding on to it, the individual gets up and, seemingly confused by this, goes over and closes the window. In that moment, you hold your gun down towards them and there's almost this need, this want, this must to killing them. And you do. Single shot, no wound, no blood. The individual collapses, the psychic energy taking hold and shredding their spinal column in a moment. You swing down and see that the individual is an orcan individual. Not young by any means, probably in his later 40s or so, which is relatively good for an orcan individual. But seemingly alone. Possibly renting the space, possibly an adventurer. You don't know. With no hesitation at all, you stuff the body back onto the bed, covering it with the sheet to make it look like it is resting. You feel the sigil begin to form below your feet as you look down and you watch as blood begins to form, forming these scratch lines across the wood. The symbol there and present, you at its centre standing on the teardrop, and as you look down, you squint your eyes, a feeling of pain shooting through you, harsher than a migraine. And yet the pain disappears in an instant. The nullification of it all, gone, washed away with what, as quickly as it came, it fleeted away from you. As you sit down cross-legged in the room, you bow your head in almost remembrance of the individual and begin to openly weep. There is a knock at the door as an individual asks if the person is alright. You do not remember the name. You do not care. As far as you're concerned, you have erased their existence. You speak back in a voice that is not your own. The first time that the inhabitor has spoken. It is a crackly voice, a little bit rough, asking them to leave, and the individual apologises for disturbing them and thought they heard them fall out of bed and asked if they were okay. You reply that you're fine. The voice unlike your own, but like a f one that you feel is familiar. Roll me an insight check. Uh, 23. 23. You think about this voice, these words, the flayed being, replied, but it's distorted, different. The voice itself changed, quite possibly, to match that of someone who they've just killed. You're not sure. 
as you sit there at the middle of the sigil, the window open, a feeling of escape available there for you, you begin to think and you begin to channel. Shadows creeping and crawling, otherwise slithering across the surface of the wood as it begins to twist and warp around you, yet you concentrate into it. And that is when another knock comes at the door. This one of a voice you recognise. A member of the party. If you'd like to go and get them for me, please. All right. Holy fuck, Chris. If I could give you inspiration right now, I totally would. Thank you. I will take it. Because I'll be using it against Over. them. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, do you, do you mind if I have a little go at the controls, or are you all good with it? Oh, you can take the controls if you want to. You just direct me, and I'll do what you tell. Sure thing. Okay. Hello. Welcome one and welcome all. Let us resume this little story we've told. So. Following Romulus's lead, you travel along the main high street. Stopped by no guard, as they are few and far between, it would seem, given how high up in the mountains you are. As you travel along the road to the edge of the city, as much as there is one, so you can see the walls high up above, and you can see the small layout of the building beyond. You look about at what look to be three or so houses, a sense coming from each of them, an air of neglect, but not destitute to them, not derelict but not exactly the proudest homes you could find. And you look at the three of them and you can see that one of them is what looks to be a simple two-story building. Another, or sorry, all three of them are two-story buildings, but one that you do notice has what looks to be a converted loft, perhaps, or at the very least, a window that leads to a loft. And you look at these three buildings, you see there is a faint light otherwise traveling in within one of them uh, quite possibly an oil lamp you're not sure but you do note that one of the windows is open on the same house that has the light Let's head up to that one. um <clears throat> can i say that on the way curve is very much sort of well, she looks concerned, but she also looks angry. And when out of the earshot of any of the guards, she sort of just makes the comment um, out loud. You know, if one of us was missing, Mortar wouldn't waste time brown-nosing guards. Oh, shit. You think that oh, brown-nosing curve? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I won't waste any more of your time. Yes. Uh, you listen to me now. We will. We would not have lived if the full force of the city's guard had come across, across us. No matter how strong each of us is, a wave of them would take us out. And the if the Ice King's aides got involved, or the Ice Kings themselves, we would be but a smear on the street. I made sure that we were able to find Mortar, and they led us to him quicker than we might have found him ourselves. So, Curve, if you question my judgment, you are welcome to make your own choices. But it, seeing as we are now, all being well, mere moments away from being reunited, I would thank you to keep your comments to yourself. Curve is stunned into silence. Just out of character. You good? Yeah, don't worry. I'm good. I fucking love the conflict. It's cool, all right. Cool. That's, That's why I made the we... comment. It's like, someone call me out. Someone call me out on this. No. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about our opinions on authority figures later. For now, we have a lead. Let's. 
Strike while the iron's hot. Okay. Yeah. How are you approaching this? Um, I'm not the best at persuasion. I would say Vinny is in comparison. Also, Vinny, you are partial rogue. Uh, yes, that is that is all true. I would like to uh, give you a boost <laughs> up to that window. Uh, and then the rest of us go in through the underneath as you infiltrate through the window. I will say, no, this window that is open is a converted loft, so you're looking at at least two stories up. I, I feel like that's doable if I giant smite. If you giant smite, yeah. I, I'll giant smite and then basically just... It, like it's an it's an up and an insta drop of it like just to like frankly part of the i'll i'll start off normal size and then part of the upwards momentum will be me giant smiting and and pushing upwards to basically give um vinny a perfect boost up okay all right i'll i'll go in there i'll try not to provoke him and calm him down as best as possible if you hear a really loud thunder wave that'll be me getting my ass kicked <laughs> Understood. Okay. You drop Vinny into the room. What is your next course of action, Romulus? Are you dropping Giant's Might? I think I will, like, uh, I will get the others in first, and then I'll be bringing up the rear. Okay, so you're ca you're picking up everyone and putting them in that window. I mean, if I can, if I can just put everyone in, that honestly works out fine for me. Okay. This changes the Except cinematics. This changes the cinematics mm -hmm. slightly, but this works still. I didn't know if that would be a possibility. Oh no, that's perfect. That's, that's perfectly still... fine. I didn't anticipate the entire party climbing in through the window as opposed to coming through the door on the other side of the room. But we'll get there in a moment. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a mistake. No, it's fine. <laughs> we'll just have to see how this goes. Because this changes your outlook on this now, Dan. It does. As, significantly. as Vinny is lifted up and placed into the room, Vinny, make me a perception check. And Mortar, you don't need to make a stealth check. Uh, 19 on perception. 19. What's your spell save, DC Mortar? 15. 15. You watch as Mortar is sat there in the in the center of the room, legs crossed, as he hear the sa as he hears seemingly the sounds from outside. You watch as Mortar turns and looks at you, Vinny, and disappears. As, more, as Romulus, you're otherwise reaching down to grab another member of the party. Vinny, what would you like to do? Okay, I just saw him vanish from my perspective. Completely vanish. Okay, I don't want to shout, but I want to call out so that people right outside might hear. Mortar, you still here? I've come to help you, you know. The words are muffled for you, Mortar. And yeah, I get the feeling that if I if I respond, I can you can hear me. You can certainly try. No, I don't think I will. I'm just gonna watch. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna be creeping closer to where I saw him disappear from. Okay. You creep a bit closer, you look down onto the floor here and you can see that there is a almost a burnt symbol onto the ground. What looks to be two triangles and a teardrop. You don't recognise it but it's Mortar was sat at the centre of it. 
Can you investigate it further, or...? Uh... Yeah, I'm going to crouch down outside of it and take one more quick glance around the room, just in case Mortar is still here somehow, and then take a slightly closer look. Okay. You As kneel. He does so. Go for it. He hears a whisper of incoherent murmur just right by his ear. Roll me a perception check, please, Vinny. Uh, that is a ten. The murmur is inconsistent. You try to focus on it in this moment, but you don't know what gets said. You turn around, otherwise seeing who would be next placed into the room, Romulus. Next up, I think, would be Curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that Curve cares about Mortar, mm -hmm. uh, as do we all, obviously, but I know that, that Curve would want to be up there, and I would not put Cat up there immediately for safety's sake. Okay. Curve, you otherwise enter the room and you see the symbols all around in this chamber. You see the symbol on the ground and you recognize it and it thrums with power. You see Vinny crouched near it as he otherwise turns and looks to you. Almost a sense of distraction about him. There's definitely his presence here. It's the same, I can see the same symbols as the man saw. The triangles everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna um, take a step back from the symbol on the ground and let us see it. Okay, as you take a step back, see uh, one as there. You, as you take a step back, uh, go ahead and roll me just a d20. Twelve. Okay. You take a step back. You were careful not to touch the symbol at all. You didn't touch the symbol, did you? Uh, no, I'm trying not to. Yeah. You didn't touch the symbol. You take a step back from it, and you otherwise can you can feel the chill air as it otherwise lingers within this house. Any right. sign of him? I, I saw him when I first came in, but then he disappeared. As, uh, as, Curve, as Curve gets closer to the symbol, um, he hears incoherent whispering in the other ear. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. Uh, okay. Oh, just the left right by you. Can... Yeah. That's a negative four. Um, question is a plus two. So that is. Six, 14. Four, 14. I believe that was enough for your set DC. Earth um, is a very um, cold voice in her ear. Just. You can almost feel breath against your ear as like these words are being spoken and through the rambling there is a sentence there is structure and you hear you don't belong here you'll never belong here and as you turn to look you see what looks to be a bed with an individual just lying asleep in it completely undisturbed by your party's presence as who is next to be put in? 
I believe Cat is next to be put into the room. Yep, Cat would be next. Okay. As Cat's placed into the room. As soon as Cat's moves, it's the wooden floor of the attic. The trigger is pulled. <gasps> and Arms of Hadar at third level is cast on everyone in this room. Okay. I would like everyone to make me a saving throw, please. Jesus DC Christ. 15. This is a strength saving throw. Strength! Yeah. Yep. Ooh, okay. Oh, something else to note. Vinny and Cat, you also suffer the minus d4 at this moment because you are within 15 feet of mortar. Uh, okay. You got a natural well, 20, so shouldn't case, matter for you. But I you, don't Vinny, think it's but... gonna. No, that's still a. Unless you somehow manage to roll a 10 on a d4, which would be entirely impressive. Um, <laughs> I don't. I think you're fine. It would be very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if anyone's going to pull that off, it's probably Vinny. But uh, no, that's a, a 22 total, off of the natural 20. 22? Wow. Okay. And Cat and Curve, I believe. Did you make the DC 15? Uh, Curve is distracted by the person on the bed and uh, receives and rolled a 10. Cat really doesn't be in this room. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead and roll me the 4d6 necrotic damage, please. I Additionally, it's 4D6 any creature... Well? Yeah. It is 4d6 at third level. Um, additionally, um, da, 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 da. Um, they cannot take reactions. If you fail the saving throw, you cannot take reactions till the end of your next turn. Yep. Uh, 13 necrotic damage. 13 necrotic damage to Cat, 13 to Curve, and 6 to Vinny. As you otherwise feel this presence as the wood around you begins to quake, as Romulus, you're, you place Cat in this room and you look in as you're kind of preparing to shrink back into your usual size and try and squeeze yourself through the window you watch as the wood around begins to creak and almost twist in this manner as it spikes upwards and begins to drain your allies health in this moment there's almost an instinctual no that comes from you as you are otherwise still outside the window in this moment uh morta i believe you would there take a, a weapon flash. frenzy yeah, there is a flash as soon as this spell is cast. It's almost like a bunch of hands just erupt from a almost black swirling portal in the middle of this ground where they try to reach out and grab you and hinder you guys. And then as Vinny dances to the side, he would notice that almost seemingly from just, yeah, just two shots are taken at Cat. Okay, go ahead. You have Unseen Attacker on the first one of these two. Uh, I've got to remember what that does. Uh, advantage on the first attack. Oh, shit. And also I've got the other one up. So yep. So... Oh, dude, I'm shaking right now. I can't even like, use my mouse properly. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's so stressful. That is a 21 is a... to hit you, Cat. Yeah. Yep. And... I lost my reaction. Yep. And so that's 2d8, I believe. Yeah, because of Spirit Shroud. Because of Spirit Shroud, that's 2d8 psychic damage plus the, um, plus 5. Plus 5. Damn, that's 18, 18 points of psychic 18 damage. 18 points of psychic damage to you, Cat. Second attack. Second. Yeah, 25 that's like 25. Go ahead and roll again. Oh, uh, you know what else we I forgot? I using... Oh yeah. You have your um Slayer's Prey. Uh or Hunter Yeah, so Slayer's Prey I'm ability. Save, I'm saving I'm saving my bonus action. Oh that's right, yeah. Unless you want me to unless no? you want me to go all No, that's fine. Okay. Oh, it's both D eights for this, because it's uh Spirit Shroud doesn't yeah. still applies to both. Oh, okay, so I got I got an eight for one and I got 
six for the six other, for the other. plus Damn. five is down. 19. Uh, Cat is down. Fuck. It's cold as ice. These hands rough. Chaos begins to grow, and I think just as Vinny darts to the side, he notices the blink spell momentarily flicker. Mortar's just standing there with black scorpion levels. Romulus's head comes over the crest of the window as he spots as Mortar shoots twice. The first shot shooting Cat directly in the chest where her heart should be, and the second going for the front. Cat collapses to the ground, unconscious. Then Mortar shoots just above Romulus's head and teleports out the window. Okay. Onto the rooftop across I... the street. Romulus, you see Mortar there. Cloak of Shadow, a grin of sadistic nature as he looks back at you. This is teleportation. Sentinel won't work. Um, Actually, you said my head was above the... Was coming above the window as you shot Cat. So you're able to see just about into the room. You're a like nearly eye level with it that's what i'm asking Lord. can i see as you shoot cat you don't have a cloud for the flavor of the impact i don't okay. have a cloud rune i do have a runic shield oh it's up to you chris i'll say both it's of you, fine if not i'll say both of you roll me initiative because this will be a i will consider this a sense of surprise if mortar gets higher than you in this Romulus, you got uh, a... That is a 10 plus 2. 12. Mortar? 8 plus 4 is 12. Ooh. My mm. dexterity modifier, if it comes down to that... <laughs> His dex is higher. Is 18. Yeah. Then we'll um, go with that. In this moment, okay. as Mortar takes the two shots, there is a moment where you want to do this, Romulus. You haven't had a chance to practice this yet. And as you go to reach out to try and create this runic shield around Cat, the second shot hits, and you watch as Cat collapses to the ground, unconscious. Cat, okay. in that, roll me a wisdom saving case, throw. I do want to tag something onto the end of mm -hmm. uh, Mortar's turn, then, if I get a chance, but we'll yeah, finalize that's fine. this first. For sure, for sure. Fourteen. As you feel the ground quake beneath you, dragging you down, as you feel the two shots, the first one hitting your heart, you feel this pain reverberate through you, a second one hit your mind, and you suddenly collapse to the ground as you hear the words, I told you I could find him. Additionally, and sorry, I, I forgot to add this. Nice. I forgot to add this. Mm -hmm. As the final nail in the coffin, as the bullet passes through her throat, there's almost a psychic kind of just backlash, and like a, a message reaches your mind. As Mortar, <laughs> Mortar says, it's almost like in a moment you two are just in a in a room, just standing alone, completely black. It's almost reminiscent of the room which you just spoke to Mortar in. And Mortar looks at you with that massive, sadistic smile. The pinprick eyes as he lowers his mask and he says, You? You thought you could help me? Little one, you couldn't even help yourself. In that moment, Cat, with a failed wisdom saving throw, do you take the creature's offer to keep you alive? Guys, it gets free. <laughs> You're not oh, going to hell. die. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go grab a drink. Quick. I'll be. I'll be. Oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I will say with the because the failed wisdom saving throw was against its deception. Right now, cat, you believe you're going to die. The creature is offering. To keep you alive. 
if you but That's take up its she's, offer. She's scared. She's alone. Apparently she's gonna die. She just wants to see her mum and dad. She thinks the only way to save them and see them is to survive, so... She agrees. Not strong oh. enough. It would have been okay, but Morta did that. <laughs> Roll me a D8. Come on. Five. The wood around you begins to creak as Cat's body hits the wood of this room. Mortar teleporting out of the room. Vinny, you take this in, seeing this happen. Curve, as you're otherwise pulled away and distracted from this, you watch as Cat's body falls limp to the floor as the wood begins to grab hold of her twisting and shifting her arm begins to erupt into a flare of dark magic as you watch as the chain around the or the cytania around her arm cracks as she pulls herself upright you watch as her form is engulfed and you watch as eyes and teeth begin to form across the surface of her. You watch as twigs begin to sprout from her, the wood being pulled and incorporated into her, thorns growing from the nearby area as you begin to feel the sharp pain of it all. Mixed with Mortar's messages as Cat transforms uncontrollably into, from what you can tell, is an entirely new form. And I think that is where we will end our session for tonight. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I, we will see all of you next week for another session of this. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.